Hi again everyone. In this video we're going to take a quick look at some of the basic connective tissue types. Okay, so we've looked at the cells, we've looked at the matrix. Let's take a look at the actual how they're actually arranged. So the first thing that or the first level of classification is to classify the tissues into either loose or dense connective tissues. And as I mentioned in the previous video, um, it really has to do with how thick the bundles of collagen are. So again, with loose connective tissues, we're dealing with thin collagen, which means that these tissues are really not meant to be dealing with a lot of stress. Um, they're not very tough, okay? Whereas the dense connective tissues tend to have thick collagen fibers. They are meant to deal with uh, a lot of stress. Uh, they're able to withstand a lot of tension. Okay, so again, think of collagen bundles as rope. So, uh, in the case of loose connective tissue, we're dealing with very thin strands of rope, whereas we're looking at very thick ropes with dense connective tissue. Okay, that's really the way you can try to picture it. Okay, now once we have this categorization, uh, we can subdivide things again. Uh, when we look at loose connective tissues, uh, we have something called loose areolar connective tissue. We'll take a look at that next. Uh, we also have adipose connective tissue, which is also loose connective tissue, reticular connective tissue. We saw an example of that in a previous video, and mesenchyme connective tissue. I won't be showing you this one. Uh, and I don't think I have any good slides of this one to show you in class. Uh, but basically, just understand that we're looking at something that is very early in development with mesenchyme tissue. And so we're dealing with very little ECM at this point and just a bunch of mesenchyme cells, okay? So there's not much there. And basically it's a tissue that's going to become one of the other types of tissues. So it could become really any of these or any of these as well. So basically this is a mesenchyme tissue is the potential to become a variety of different types of connective tissues. Uh, now, when we're dealing with dense connective tissues, um, we can have dense irregular or dense regular connective tissues. And basically, this just refers to the irregular versus regular, refers to the arrangement of the fibers. So let's take a look at some examples. So the first one on the list is loose areolar connective tissue. And what we're looking at here is, uh, again, a, a fairly loose network of collagen fibers. They're relatively uh, thin. Um, now it says here thick. Um, that's in terms of comparison to the other fibers that might be on there, like elastic fibers, which are thinner than the collagen fibers. Okay. Now this issue is very highly vascularized quite often. And the main cell types we're going to find here are fibroblasts. Um, now, again, you have the other two macrophages and mast cells as well, but unless you specifically stain for them, you have an antibody that can identify them for you, you won't be able to see these as something different. They will all look just like fibroblasts, pretty much. Okay, So we're looking at mostly a tissue that has fibers and cells that are making or maintaining those fibers. So let's take a look at an example. And so what you have here is a spread. This is not a section. And this is a spread slide. Okay, so, and that basically means that someone took uh, some of this tissue and just kind of pulled it apart and spread it across, like a tablecloth almost, across a slide. Okay, so it's kind of been pulled apart so you can actually see the spaces and you can see how loose it is. And you can also see how uh, these fibers are arranged. Okay, and so, some of these fibers that you can see here, like these thicker ones over here, that's collagen. Okay, so this fiber over here is type 1 collagen. Whereas some of these really thin fibers that you see here, these thin fibers that kind of bend, they look like little hairs on the slide. 
These are elastic fibers. Okay. And so elastic fibers are visible in this case because they have been specifically stained for. So again, they're being stained with Orsian stain. And that's the only reason you can actually see them. Uh, the other things that you can see on this slide here are the cells. And so we can actually see are just the nuclei. So here's the nucleus of a fibroblast. Here's the nucleus of a fibroblast. Here's the nucleus of a fibroblast. Here's another one. Okay, so I want you to notice the size of the nucleus. Again, it's a relatively high magnification that we're looking at here. Look at the size of the nucleus and compare it to the thickness of the collagen fibers. Okay? And so you can see here that in many cases, the collagen fiber is thinner. Some of these ones here, for example, they're thinner or about the same thickness as the size of that nucleus, the diameter of the nucleus. So this would be classified as a fairly loose connective tissue. The fibers of collagen are relatively thin. Next slide is adipose tissue. Now adipose tissue is really made up of adipocytes. Now adipocytes can come as two varieties, unilocular or multilocular. In most cases you're going to be seeing unilocular adipocytes. Uh, by locular, unilocular, multilocular, we just basically mean how many droplets of lipid are there. So if you're looking at an adipocyte, quite often what you see is just one big drop of oil and then a little bit of cytoplasm around that with a nucleus. Okay? It kind of gets squished in. Okay, so this here would be the fat. Okay, so that's that's the locule. Okay, so a unilocular adipocyte has only one locule, whereas a multilocular locular adipocyte has multiple droplets of fat within cytoplasm and also a nucleus. Okay, so this would be a multilocular adipocyte and that tends to be found in brown fat which is mostly found in, in babies uh, and also in hibernating animals um, in humans you don't really find these not, no, at least not in adults okay so most of your fat is going to be of this variety here okay now when you look at this slide this might seem a little confusing because when you look at this, this is the adipose tissue over here. And so you can see lots of these little bubbles. Each of these is a fat cell. Okay. Now you might say, well, this seems a little confusing because all these cells seem very close together. So why is this classified as a connective tissue? I don't see much ECM here. I don't see much extracellular matrix here. Uh, and the reason for that, the, or the reason that this is still classified as a connective tissue is that it started out looking very much like a loose areolar connective tissue with a bunch of these small, initially multilocular adipocytes, or adipoblasts rather. And over time, they grew bigger and bigger and bigger because of the accumulation of lipids, and so they are simply pushed all that matrix around themselves. So they kind of pushed that out of the way and so they kind of expanded until they, there was no further room for expansion. Okay, So again, all of this here that you're seeing is adipose tissue. Okay, Now the reason that it looks empty or that the the, the spaces inside the fat cells look empty is because the fat has been leached out during slide preparation and it's no longer there. Okay, so uh, any slides of adipose tissue will usually be unstained uh, and so you'll basically just see a little bit of cytoplasm and a nucleus and not much else. And the cytoplasm is just the outline. So the reason you're seeing an outline here is not because of the membrane but because of the actual cytoplasm of the cell getting pushed off to the edges. Okay. Next tissue is reticular connective tissue. Okay, now this is basically a network of fibers, reticular fibers, and basically kind of 
forms a, a mesh on which other cells sit. Okay, so whenever we're trying to show you reticular fibers or reticular tissue, we need to stain them with silver, and that's what you're seeing here. Uh, I showed you this slide in the previous video. Um, again, what we're seeing here is basically a network of these highly branched silver-loving or argeophilic uh, fibers. So they were stained with silver, and that's why they look black. And then a whole bunch of these cell nuclei kind of sitting on top of them. So here you have all these different nuclei that just kind of live within this matrix, and they just kind of sit there and wait to th for things to pass by them. Okay. On the next slide, we have dense irregular connective tissue. So now we're getting to the dense connective tissues. And so here we're going to be looking at uh, tissues that contain a lot more uh, thick fibers of collagen. So much thicker bundles of collagen are going to be visible here. So think about it in this in terms of how large are the nuclei of the cells, of the fibroblasts, and compare that to how thick are the fibers of collagen. Okay, and again, we're looking at type 1 collagen here. Okay, so very thick quite often very closely packed bundles of collagen. Now it's called irregular because these bundles of collagen might go in one direction for one of these bundles. So one piece of collagen, one fiber of collagen, collagen bundle, I guess, not fiber, would go in one direction. And then you might have another one that's going to go in a different direction. Okay. And so that's what makes it irregular. Basically, it's able to resist stress from multiple directions. Okay, So it can resist multi-directional -direct stress because the bundles of collagen are arranged in any direction. So in three dimensions, this thing is able to resist tension in any direction. Okay, And a good place to find this is in the dermis of the skin, for example. So in your skin, if you pinch your skin and try to pull it in any direction, you're going to feel resistance in any direction that you pull. Okay, that's just because of the way that the bundles of collagen are arranged in this tissue. And so if you look at the slide, here are, again, we're looking at eosinophilic fibers here. So, so here's a bundle of collagen. So all of this would be a bundle of collagen. And then you can see these little blue dots, these basophilic dots right here. Let me just maybe do them in blue. Oh, sorry, in yellow, just a bit more easily visible. So here is one nucleus here, one nucleus there, one nucleus here, one nucleus here. Here's another nucleus. So these are fibroblast nuclei. So notice the size of these nuclei in comparison to how thick the bundles of collagen are. Okay? And again, so it's dense connective tissue, definitely. Uh, the other thing is how is dense irregular? Well, you have bundles going off. Where's my cursor? In one direction here. Then there is bundles going off here. Then there's a bundle going off in this direction. Okay, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we're seeing. With these dark slides, it's really difficult to see my cursor on this. Here are some bundles in cross section. Okay, so these are coming out towards us, for example. Okay, so uh, there's multi directional arrangement of these fibers, and so this is why it's a dense irregular connective tissue. Okay, and last we have dense regular connective tissue, which comes as a tendon or a ligament. And basically, what we have are again thick fibers of collagen, but they are arranged in the same direction, so they're all going in one direction. 
So all the bundles of collagen are going to go in the same direction. And the uh, fibroblasts will be arranged in between them. Where there is a bit of space for cells, that's where they will be, in between the bundles of collagen. Okay. Now the difference here is that the tendon connects muscle to bone. And so when you pull against it, the muscle can stretch. But a ligament connects bone to bone. Bones do not stretch. And so when you have two bones pulling against one another, the ligament has to stretch. So this part has to stretch. And as you might recall from the previous video, if you want a tissue to stretch and recoil, you need to have elastic fibers. Okay, and so really that's the big difference is the ligaments have elastic fibers. Okay, so ligament here. Ligament has elastic fibers. And so again, to be able to see them, you need to kind of visualize them using something like Orsian. And so if you had Orsian, you might see something wavy in between the bundles of collagen. So again, wherever there is space in between the bundles of collagen, you would also find cells and these elastic fibers. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. Uh, this is a tendon, and so what you're seeing here are rows of nuclei of fibroblasts. And again, over here, so very typical. The fact that they're in nice, neat rows like this basically means that there was no space, there was no room for them. Oops, maybe I should use a different color, maybe it'll be yellow here. Okay. There was no room for them in here. This is just too dense. There was no room for any cells to squeeze in here because that's a bundle of collagen. Okay, so again, this is why it's called a dense connective tissue because um, it is very thick fibers of collagen. Again, here as well. Um, and again, what we have is nuclei and rows in between. Okay, all right, thanks for your time. We'll see you next video.